Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Game Tech Dokkan video, we're going to be discussing as well as analyzing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. Hopefully, you're having an amazing day. Well, we have several very interesting stories to get through in this video, but I'll start things out with an AMD story, which, to be honest, is more of a small update, and it concerns AMD's Renoir APUs, but for the desktop. We've known that they're incoming for some time now, and uh, Rogaine has actually discovered an 8 4 16 Fared CPU, or APU technically, which is running at 3.5 GHz for the base frequency. Of course, it still has much the same uh, of the specifications of the uh, laptop variant, so it still has an enhanced Vega uh, GPU core. And this particular sample was running on an ASRock Desk Mini. It's an X300 model. There's a very good chance, given we've seen this, that uh, the APU samples are now in the hands of AMD's partners. I'm about to make a very broad, sweeping statement. But typically, AMD's uh, internal testing is done a lot more carefully. And what I mean by that isn't that, uh, you know, the Azrocs of the world are just like throwing the APU or the silicon against the wall and seeing if it bounces. Instead, I mean that uh, they're a lot more careful to be like, oh, okay, well, let's just make sure that the, uh, you know, Ethernet cable or not is uh, not plugged in or what have you. And this is one of the reasons I think, and I, I say this without any evidence, but I wouldn't be surprised at the very least if the RDNA 2 sample, which leaked, um, with the result which showed it was actually outperforming the RTX 2080 Ti by around 30-ish percent. It was done deliberately by AMD just to generate some hype for their upcoming architecture. I could be wrong on that, but I wouldn't be surprised at all. Either way, this is not huge news for Renoir. Uh, it's basically just kind of evidence that the APUs are, well, at the very least, getting closer to launch. For the AM4 platform, but most likely it means that they are now in the hands of uh, AMD's partners. And speaking of things in the hands of uh, people, that was a terrible segue, but whatever, Intel have started to send out Tiger Lake promotional kits to select reviewers. And this is, of course, because Tiger Lake is getting closer to launch for mobile. And this was sent to uh, Legit Reviews reviewer, uh, Nathan, and he's the first person to have received one of these so far, and it's Tiger Lake Roaring, damn it, because the kit features a blue planter, and there are a couple of orange lily seeds, uh, lilium, which means Tiger, Law, uh, Tiger Roar, excuse me. Tiger Lake is going to feature the updated architecture known as Willow Cove, which of course succeeds Sunny Cove. IPC gains I'm hearing for Willow Cove, although it's not been formally tested, and uh, obviously Intel have not stated this officially, but from Skylake to uh, Sunny, it's an 18% IPC gain. That's been, of course, A, tested, and B, Intel themselves have confirmed that. But from Sunny to Willow, I'm hearing it's not a huge jump. Um, it was kind of leaked online that it was around 7%, and I'm also, I've reported that in previous videos as well, quite a while ago, that according to my information, it's more of an iteration on Sunny Cove fixes some of the issues like improvements in cache and blah, blah, blah. Efficiency has gone up. It's not that it's not uh, impressive in its own right, but it's around a 7%, 8%, something like that IPC game I'm hearing. Either way, it also features the XE graphics uh, iGPU as well. And, interestingly, I'm still hearing from a couple of people uh, who have whispered to me that Rocket Lake is a backport of Cove. Now, I mentioned this uh, quite a while ago. I released a video back in, I believe it was October of last year, and uh, I was told that it was uh, actually based on one of the cove architectures although my source didn't have exact information of what that uh, architecture was they simply told me that it was a backport 
onto 14nm and i'm hearing this actually for a couple of other people that that is ultimately what rocket lake is although there is a lot of um let's say disagreement between the people that have sent me the information exactly how much better it is over comet lake um one concern that a lot of them seem to have is that uh, a lot of the information we have thus far points that we're only going to have up to eight uh cpu cores but ultimately it's still kind of up in the air right now the positive is that i am hearing that the clock frequency for the desktop variant is going to be pretty good either way getting back to the actual focus here tiger lake i am looking forward to on the mobile arena obviously given intel are facing a lot of pressure from amd on well just about every front at the moment i think it makes sense for them to hurry their butts up and get uh, Tiger Lake out the door. And I'll be curious to see how it performs, yes, but also other things like battery life. And now let's switch over to NVIDIA and the RTX 3080. And this, well, I suppose A confirms the fact that it's the RTX 3080, assuming these images are legit. And B is probably one of the weirder looking GPUs in recent years. Um, so it basically has an irregular shaped PCB. You can see it almost looks like a V shape with one of the uh, images really highlighting this. You can see that the uh, black backplate um, has like a V shape uh, and then to the right is one of the fans. But there is actually a fan on both sides of this thing from what we can tell anyway from these images and they seem to be bi-directional which I'm assuming is kind of some type of push-pull configuration. I mean, obviously, there is a possibility that this is not the final design of uh, the RTX 3080 Aesthetic, but I certainly wouldn't be surprised. It definitely is uh, going to be interesting in terms of noise levels. Theoretically, you would assume that the purpose here is just to maximize airflow, which could mean one of two things. One is actually kind of silent because they've chosen wisely in terms of the design or it's not so silent at all. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if there is not a middle ground here. I'm really hoping it is kind of silent. NVIDIA generally do pretty well here. I mean, we all remember the uh, leaf blower designs, but um, yeah, I will be super curious whether this is a return back to the... Um, the uh, GeForce at GTX for 80 days, but uh, hopefully it's not. Either way, it's going to be very interesting to see what this thing is actually capable of, especially in light of some additional specifications that uh, Clopity 7 Kimmy, hopefully I've not butchered that uh, name, has actually leaked. Now, to be fair to them, they've actually been pretty accurate with several things in the past, including things that NVIDIA themselves have confirmed, for the uh, Ampere data center uh, high performance computing GPUs. So obviously you should still take this with a pinch of salt because it is not official confirmation from uh, NVIDIA and Papa Jensen has not provided these cards yet. But either way, there are a couple of interesting things I'm noting, noticing about these configurations. I'm having one of those days where I really can't speak. Anywho, the RTX 3080 appears to be using GA102 Silicon, it's GA102-200, and has a rather impressive 4,352 CUDA cores with 10 gigabytes of memories. Unfortunately, what we don't have is information regarding the uh, clock frequencies, which would obviously give a lot more of an indication of how much performance there is with these GPUs. Apparently, according to Property as well, the um, Titan cards are going to feature 5,376, also using the GA102 silicon, but this is with the 400 model, and the RTX 3090, which I'm assuming is going to be the equivalent of saying the TI, TI, whatever you want to call it, has 5,248. But it's also got really quick memory. It's 21 GBPS GDDR6X, which obviously 6X has not exactly been announced yet. Um, but it might just be shorthand to say really fast memory or 
whatever. But ultimately, let's just take all of this with a pinch of salt. What I am getting from this information, though, is that NVIDIA are probably a little more nervous than uh, perhaps they were, uh, to begin with, of the RDNA 2 performance. I am hearing from a lot of people that uh, RDNA 2 is, well, performing better than uh, NVIDIA had expected. And this is allegedly one of the reasons that we've heard all of this stuff regarding new tape outs and blah, blah, blah. With that said, NVIDIA don't generally go down without a fight. I don't think it's going to be a complete, like, stomp AMD, like, just beating NVIDIA at every price point. And ultimately, and this is getting slightly off the topic of performance, one thing NVIDIA have down to pat, they've got perfected, is their drivers and the support of the software. Um, and I know a lot of people that are willing to pay the NVIDIA premium, he says in air quotes, because of the drivers. Um, and I think AMD are going to do better with RDNA 2, because one, what, another reason I believe that's the case is because it doesn't look good on Sony and Microsoft if the drivers constantly crash, and that's the architecture which is in the next generation consoles. And also, to be fair, from what I'm hearing from people uh, with the recent in, uh, AMD drivers, things have been doing better, um, and the drivers have largely fixed many of the issues people have had. The problem, of course, is that um, people are still a little bit more wary uh, with AMD cards compared to NVIDIA cards, but ultimately it's going to come down to the performance, I suspect, and pricing of these upcoming offerings. Remember, back in the day, I hate saying that, it makes me feel like I'm a, like 152 or something, but either way, back in the day, there were many reports which would indicate that the 3080 was basically utilizing the GA104 core, or even the 103, there was some conflicting evidence, and we've also heard multiple reports of uh, different processes being used, and NVIDIA apparently switching this, and blah, blah, blah. So perhaps one of the reasons that NVIDIA did all this, there was even other reports that GA103 had been panned, cancelled, nuked, smacked on the head with a stick. And apparently one of the reasons I've been hearing is that they didn't feel it was going to be enough to compete with AMD. And I want to go much deeper into this as well, especially because AMD um, are going to be joined in terms of competition by Intel soonish. And I don't think Intel are going to come out with a flagship card this year, which is going to ruffle stomp anyone. But um, I do think that Intel are here to play. And I think much like their CPUs, they will be competitive in the GPU arena, assuming things continue as they are. And it looks like they are. It looks like Intel will eventually have some pretty damn good products for gaming. But obviously that's in the future. And currently, right now, NVIDIA have to fight off AMD. And it's going to be interesting because there is definitely a potential here that NVIDIA could be the hotter, um, a hotter architecture. Maybe they have to crank the clock frequencies higher. Yes, they'll be faster, but they have to crank the clock frequencies more than perhaps they were originally comfortable with because of the performance of the GPUs. Don't forget, AMD uh, have 80 compute units in RDNA 2. I've heard that multiple times, and several other websites have now reported that. It's also been on various other forums like Chip Hell. So I'm pretty certain that that's true. Uh, I'm also hearing that the die is around 500 mm squared. I also reported uh, a while ago that Arcturus, or as it's now known, CDNA2, had such a large die that it was, according to one of my sources, pushing reticle limits. And all of that does seem to be coming true. So I'm kind of thinking that AMD do have a really good GPU on their hands. One of my sources had told me that Narve 23 was the NVIDIA killer, which I assumed to mean that it was the biggest skew. It was the highest end um, 
cards would be based on the Anave 23 silicon, but maybe that wasn't actually what my source meant. Maybe they were instead referring to price to performance ratio, which is obviously just as important. A good mid range GPU at a compelling price is extremely attractive, and it kind of reminds me of back when we saw uh, GPUs like the RX 480, which was a very good GPU for the uh, price that uh, AMD were charging for it. There were a couple of issues like the PCIe power draw, but overall the RX 480 was really nice. This time though, I suspect that AMD are going to have great product offerings throughout their lineup. The question is though, what will Nvidia be bringing to the table? With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. The normal stuff, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.